Now it is Friday, it is 11.30 and I'm joined in the studio by author and self-help guru Peter Jones. Peter has got five books to his name, four self-help books and his debut fiction The Good Guy's Guide to Getting the Girl. Besides writing, Peter gives inspirational talks about how to be happy along with writing his blog and reviewing his favourite films. All the lovely is peterjonesauthor.com. You can uh, find out about Invisible to Irresistible, how to do everything and be happy, how to eat loads and stay slim, how to start dating and stop waiting. And the new improved the good girls the good guy's guide to getting the girl look nearly got oh, there we'll edit that bit no we won't i won't edit that i'm gonna leave it in what did you i just have to tell you what that Peter takes just said. 10 years to say that wait eight percent funnier i didn't even get to say that okay go new on. and improved and eight percent funnier yes what did you say to me earlier just for just the wrong thing to say to a radio presenter before they come on air if i worked anywhere else what did you say <laughs> <laughs> we no, we were the- discussing a different, a completely different uh, radio station. Yeah. And you, because, uh, you, you know, your boss had said to you, I'm surprised you hadn't been snapped up by, mm, 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 mm. Yeah. And I said, if you wouldn't last five minutes, uh, mm, mm, you'd be fired within about f- <laughs> the first week. <laughs> but, that's be- but that was because... Because I'm not, formu- I'm not formulated, yeah. that's no, what you mean. No, you're not. You're kind of, you know, you're a little bit edgy. Yeah. You know, you like to sort of like keep get, keep your, keep your guests on their toes. Yeah. So uh, so that's why you wouldn't. You know, and I think so. It was a compliment. It was a compliment. Don't really. look at me in those pleading eyes. <laughs> Now, we're here to talk about it, even though he's pleading at me at the moment. Uh, you've got to say a very uh, good afternoon or good morning, rather, to your agent. Who? Hello, Peter. Peter Nightingale. There we go. There you go. Because she's listening, apparently. Yeah. That's a good name, actually. You wouldn't think, but I bet she gets that a lot, people saying, thinking she's a guy. Uh, I don't know. I, I did, it's, not, it's not a question that I've actually, it has actually come up during our conversation. But it's conversation. P-E-T-A. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I can't even spell stuff. P- anyway, moving P- swiftly on. Uh, now, you are an author and a self-help guru. Uh, yeah, well, you gave me the label of self-help guru. I, I've never called myself a self-help guru. But since okay. you've called me a self-help guru, there was a blog post came out this morning that uh, somebody had written about their struggles with depression. It was yeah. an excellent blog post. And they, they said, uh, I read a book by Peter Jones, self-help guru. And I thought, yeah, I know, yeah. it's spreading. It's yeah. So, yeah, it gets about there. Mm. Uh, now, if we t- go back to when you, because uh, there's loads of people out there that always want to write a book. And I had an author in here yesterday yeah. who's got her debut. And she's actually got, got a debut bu- book. And then she's got another two coming out. Yes. Um, but uh, we were talking about the pressures of writing because you've got children and, yeah. and stuff. So when did you write from being a very young boy? Is that something you did at school or it wasn't something yes. you did? Yes. Uh, one of my earliest memories really um, was uh, kneeling on my grandmother's living room carpet and she would have given me a few sheets of A4 paper mm. and I'd fold them in half and then take a stapler and staple all the way down one side to create like a spine. And then depending on whether the book sort of sat, uh, you know, landed on the floor that way or that way whoops <laughs> uh that determined whether the book read from left to right or right to left and i would yeah. start writing a story and drawing the pictures that went in that story mm. and then uh, when i ran out of pages the story would come to a rather abrupt end at which point it was distributed on a read and return basis so yeah i was i used to write a lot have you got any of those have you, did, did you no. get no no what, what a shame hey it would yeah. be nice to have kept those You'd yeah a little frame and yeah. one doors couldn't you yeah and then I, I started going to sort of like um, uh, creative writing classes uh, in my late teens, early 20s, here in Brentwood, actually. Mm. And um, I did that for a couple of years. But I actually got put off because the creative writing teacher, who didn't, who wasn't really a big fan of my writing, because I used to write very serious sort of science fiction back yeah. then. And uh, she, set, she used to set us homework. And one night she set us... Um, uh, uh, a poem. We had to go and write a poem, and I hate poetry. I've n- <laughs> never really made, never really made a secret of the fact that I hate poetry. So I, uh, I but I wrote this poem. And it was a funny poem about why I hate poetry. Mm. Anyway, she absolutely loved it and said that um, I should stick to poetry and forget about writing science fiction. And that more or less killed my writing ambition. Yeah. From then until about uh, thirty something, and I because ca- I came home one day and discovered that Kate. Uh, my wife, she'd uh, she'd been sorting out some papers and she'd come across my short stories mm. and my poem. And she said to me, uh, I like these short stories because she used to read an awful lot, you know, a novel a month or yeah. something like that. And she did like science fiction as well. And she said, I like these short stories, you know, oh, I've, yeah, I've read better, I've read worse. Mm. Uh, she said, but this poem I absolutely love. And I was like, oh, God, you know, somebody else who thinks my poems are, you know, funny and, you know, good. And she said, but what you ought to do is you ought to take the humour that's in the poem and put it into your stories. Yeah. And 
that's what my creative writing teacher should have said to me all those years uh, years earlier because I probably would have been 10 years you know ahead of the game if, if she said that and so and so that's what I started doing kind of it, it shows you what what you know how important teachers are to children and how you yeah, know it does. It, because if they say the wrong because you always remember school and you always remember the good teacher and yeah. you always remember the bad teacher yeah. and if they say the wrong thing at the wrong time yeah. it can really disrupt and even if you're older and you're going to you know you want to I don't want to try and do pottery I want to try and do yeah. something else if somebody actually you know doesn't give you the support or encouragement yeah you, you just lose it I also think as well what it shows is that uh, the importance of finding uh, finding your voice uh, mm. you hear that a lot in writing circles you know what is your voice and all that sort of stuff but basically what it means is you know f- finding your niche if you like finding out finding what you're good at because once I started putting humor into my writing yeah it, it, it started to come to life it was a lot more interesting mm. and I've never really turned turned my back on that since and what was the first so you got the sci-fi book which we're never going to never going to make no they were just short stories yeah you're not going to worry about that (laughs) (laughs) they'll probably never see the light of day well you could do you could be like as it's asmoth i can't say his name yeah, Asimov. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could be like, he did short stories. I mean, look, got I Am did. Legend. You got all, that, like the Matrix, yeah. I think, or a couple yeah. of others are made into that's films. True. I Am Robot. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe one day I'll go back to science fiction, but do something. You know, if I did, I'd do it more in in the way that I write at the moment. So it would yeah. still be humorous. Mm. No, actually, what happened? What um, uh, what happened? Uh, how I got writing again, or that you know, was um, around about ten years ago, where me and Kate were sitting in bed one morning, one Sunday morning, and she was reading the morning papers and she used to like reading the daily mail because she could get you know she's from northern ireland and she could get really worked up about stuff you know and the daily mail is really good if you like getting worked <laughs> up about stuff <laughs> and i don't really like the daily mail very much sorry about that daily mail and uh and so i was sitting in bed doing nothing she said what are you doing and i said uh, nothing and she said why do you you know read the supplement i read the supplement i don't want to read the supplement she said why don't you go and get your laptop and do some writing you could write about you know that daft idea of how you all thought you were going to meet Kylie Minogue uh, because you know I went through my 20s thinking I was going to bump into Kylie Minogue actually what I thought would happen was that Kylie Minogue would break down outside my house Mm. (laughs) and pick my door out of the many available to come knocking and saying um, I've broken down my mobile phone's just ran out of juice and can I come in and do the locomotion with you well (laughs) you know could I use your phone and I'd waft her in with no idea that I even knew who she was Mm. and I'd make her like a calming beverage like a chamomile tea or something like that and I'd come back that's a bit suspicious to me (laughs) don't drink that I'd come back into the lounge and and, you know and she'd still be recovering from the shock of being told that you know they couldn't get to her in under an hour yes Mm. they know who she is all that sort of stuff and uh, and she'd say you know how the showbiz sort of business is you know it's getting a it's, it's sort of lost its sort of like you know charm really she's thinking of getting out and you know and this is lovely tea so nice to meet somebody else who likes chamomile and could i just hold her because she's really in need of a hug right now your voice went a bit lower when you said that. Do you realise that? I know, that? Well, that's because I was, I was <laughs> I there. Right <laughs> In my head, I was there. <laughs> anyway, I, used to, I told this to Kate, and she said, why don't you write that? So I, I, I wrote that down. And after she'd finished sort of like getting angry about what was going on in the world, she said, mm. come on then, read, read me what you've written. So I read back this... Uh, just this little piece I'd written and she'd roared with laughter and said yeah still funny I still like it and that would make a really good opening chapter for a novel mm. and I was like oh what novel and she said the one you're going to write I said but I just was killing time she said no no you, you know you should turn that into a novel and so I started mm. and then 10 years later I managed to you know that that had blossomed into a full length book now we're going to be talking about the book the good guy's guide to getting the girl i've said it yeah. right look at that yeah and it takes me about 15 attempts yeah and uh, now we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back with more okay. peace jones we're going to talk about his new book and also the self-help uh, books as well because you've got eat how to eat loads and stay slim which i always read as how to stay slim and eat like what is it <laughs> how to eat <laughs> well, everything so, <laughs> yeah i said how to eat everything and never gain any weight i was like well give me give me a couple of that book straight away <laughs> uh, so we'll be back with peter right after the fine young cannibals Peter 
don't just sit in there thinking we're going to have a, that's the shorter version you see ah. you thought it was going to be like 40 seconds or I was going to do the same yeah, thing yeah. again <laughs> no 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 I like it like it right joined in the studio by author Peter Jones all the W's Peter Jones author.com writer of uh, lots of self help go- uh, books and also the good guys guide to getting the girl which is new and improved and 8% funnier yeah and, uh, 8% funnier eight, eight, how do you know it's only 8% funnier is that seriously what you've done have you actually marked it uh, did you sort of do a little graph? Excel spreadsheet and uh, no 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 I'll just trace the description it. people will have you for that if they've read it and they said like it's, it's seven and a half percent i'd like to know how they measured it <laughs> well it's maybe in chalkles i don't know do you want to know why it's eight percent funny why is it eight percent funny what have you put in there uh well what happened was um the first edition of that book came out last september yeah. and it did very very well uh, back in september for that first week it roared up the charts got to i think it was number nine mm. in women's contemporary fiction uh no women's humorous contemporary fiction i was right up there with the yeah. likes of bridget jones's diary and that sort of stuff and uh it did really really well for a week and then it sort of like started to come down come yeah. down come down come down and sort of disappeared into obscurity which was very disappointing but it was enough to uh, attract the attention of the my aforementioned agent and yeah. um and she read it and she said i really like this and i think it's still got legs mm. and uh she managed to negotiate a public publicity deal with amazon which is quite nice yeah. and she said i think we can tweak it a little bit so we put in a couple of extra scenes we gave it a nice bright new cover yep. and so we sort of like relaunched it rebranded it and it is uh, so yeah if it's not eight percent it's at least eight percent funnier <laughs> it is it is really difficult i so i say this to all the writers and, and uh, that come in because we have so many fantastic musicians with their albums yeah. and it's such a shame because people come in and you hear their albums or you read their books yeah. and you think it's really brilliant it's yeah. as brilliant as the people that are up there but there, sometimes it's just through not having the luck or not being in the right place at the yep. right time that your book or your album just doesn't do anything. And it is, it's a terrible shame when you've got so many, you know, talented writers, musicians mm-hmm. and artists. But that is the way of the, the world. But it, but it doesn't stop yeah. you from continuing to to carry on writing and developing a face developing a fan base it's the same thing and also it's yeah. a little bit easier now because you've got twitter you've got facebook you yeah. can do a lot of self-promotion yes you know yeah it's still a tough job though mm. but it's fun but yeah. you know i'm having more fun than i've ever had before so uh so yeah it's it's i, I was gonna say i wouldn't i'd recommend it to everybody i'm not sure actually that's true but um but because it is it is a tough business but it's yeah. but it is a lot of fun as well now you have to be disciplined to do the writing so with yeah. the book the self-help uh, books you actually go out and you do give uh, inspirational talks to people as well and you've got your blog yeah. um so tell us about why did you get into self-help what changed in your life that made you want to do that because that is kind of a because you've got your fiction mm-hmm. which is did you hear that Not yeah there we go. See, it's a nice thick book. Um, that wasn't that wasn't Peter, by the way. I'm just <laughs> stabbing him on the leg. That's the book. Right, that's the book. Uh, so, why do you've got your fiction? But yeah. why did you start uh, getting involved in self help? Uh, well, I didn't want to. That kind of, that kind of happened by accident, uh, didn't it? It was uh, quite a few years ago now. I lost my wife mm. and um, to a brain hemorrhage, and it was all very sudden. And um, and that and as you can imagine, that turned my life upside down back yeah. then. And um, and it made me that made me rethink uh everything you know i started questioning absolutely everything mm. uh and and started th- you know i had this real sort of i went through a period of sort of like self discovery really and one of the things i realized was i wasn't a particularly happy person back then yeah. um at all uh yeah there had been some happy moments most of them in the previous three years most of them down to cape but uh but i, I realized that i didn't want my life to be about moments of happiness i wanted to be happy all of the time mm. so i took i used to work in credit card banking back then I was a fix-it man, mm. and uh, I took those problem-solving skills that I'd been using to make rich men richer and applied them to the problem of my own life, about the fact that I seemed to be unhappy. So, to, you know, that, those sort of problem-solving methodologies and sort yeah. of like... And it started to work. And um, and then, you know, and uh, I remember one... I was having a conversation with somebody at work, and she said, what are you doing at the weekend? And I said, I'm having a boxing day. And she said, you're doing a what? And I had to tell her about boxing day. Um, and she said and she said what else is on this master plan this happiness master plan and so i told her about some of the other ideas i have now lists and wish lists and how i set myself goals but how i make my uh, make sure i do them and Mm. how i've pointed my life in a new direction how happier than i've ever been and she said that's great you ought to write that as a book people would buy that and they're millions um and um 
and so it was short stories i actually did that i did write the book and right. we were we're not going to tell you about boxing days because you will have to buy peter's book to find out what a boxing day is that's fair <laughs> yeah, enough, just, it? yeah it's true yeah i'll just yeah. go to the blog and he'll tell you yeah that. if you go to the blog it's all the w's peter jones com. just quickly on to um the book the good guy's guide to getting the yes. girl uh just tell us a little bit and then we're going to take a quick break for some magazine and we're going to come back well to now that you see now this sounds like self-help but it isn't it's fiction it's a story mm. okay it's kind of a bridget jones's diary but from a man's point of view okay yeah. it's about a 30 something year old guy called jason and um how he sort of like finally splits up with um his long-term girlfriend of liz who's quite a controlling sort of like character she's yeah. she's not really a very nice person and he finally thinks i've had it with sort of like um the lizzie's of this world i want to you know he he really wants to find his kylie minogue and what, oh hello, hello. what's that <laughs> She's here, Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts. So he he sets off on this journey to try and find the woman of his dreams, and he comes up with various nutty uh, methods uh, in order to to to, to find her. Mm. And uh, yeah, and uh, you know, along the way, he risks uh, friends, a career, you know, everything in in order to in order to find this woman. Now we're going to talk more. I'm just going to do some uh, quick bit of travel, and then okay. we'll have some ads, and we'll be back with more from Peter Jones. No idea. I think that was Carly trying to get in through the window. She was. <laughs> did you hear her? Oh, I think she meant Peter. That, that was the sound. It sounded very much like a drill, but I think it could have been Kylie. Right, I'll go and have a look. I'll go and have a look as well. <laughs> Phoenix FM. Yeah, you're gonna get right fed up with that music, can't you? I don't know. I want somebody to play that every time I walk into a room. I think it. <laughs> I think it worked really well. I've taken some lovely pictures of you today. They look really well. I think. <laughs> you always you. wear a hat. Peter is uh, Peter because you're six foot four. You don't really need to be much taller, but you always wear a nice hats. Thank you. Yeah, I like wearing hats. I love that red. Now, on your, um, there's other on your blog, you've bought yourself a red, a velvet <laughs> a top red hat. top hat. I know. Well, I don't, that was a bit of a mad moment, really. Was it very expensive? No, no. It was It was quite reasonable. It's brilliant. Yeah. You just wear it when you go out, because people have to go, I who is, why not? Out. I actually had friends email me and say, don't wear the hat on Saturday. <laughs> I think this red top hat, it just, just you're just sort of strolling down, because people will remember you. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly on? will. Yeah, yeah. I think there's that loony with the uh, with the red top hat again. You just got to wear the right attire for it. You can't wear it with it. You've got to wear it with more or less a suit jacket, haven't you? Like a. <coughs> <laughs> well, the whole the whole regalia. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to because if you wear it, just be, I don't know. It's one of those things you just can't throw in a, a, like a top hat. Yeah. I, I think it's just going to. I think I'm just going to put it on a hat stand at home, and oh. uh, I might, you know, I might wear it for talks or something like yeah. that. I, when I do, <laughs> what just the hat? That'll sometimes, well, sometimes, job, yeah. sometimes I do workshops, <laughs> and I have it like I have this genie hat, like an Aladdin oh. genie, it's sort of like an Aladdin thing, and I put that on. That always gets a big laugh. So um, yeah. Hmm. There you go. Um, now, where does the just before we talk more about the book, where does your fa- you're starting reviewing films as well? That was just b- more more or less by accident. My friend, uh, I've got a friend on Facebook called Chris, and he, mm. you know how easy it is to set up a group on Facebook. It's dead easy, and he set up <laughs> Chris's Film Club, and then just invited his friends <laughs> and said, and said, and it, feel free to invite <clears throat> your friends. So yeah. everybody did, and before you knew it, there was like a whole load of people on there just sort of saying, "Oh, I went to cinema this week. I saw this film. It was quite good," you know. And yeah. so I started doing that as well. And uh, but me being me, I can't just write. Yeah, it was right. You know, I had to write a little bit more. And mm. and I thought to myself, you, you know, because the blog was looking sort of like like I hadn't done much on it for absolutely ages, or if I had, it was all like just you know buy my book, buy my book, which is very boring. And I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these these reviews that I've done of various films and sort of turn them into blog posts, and they're quite popular. People quite like them. So uh, do you yeah. film them? Do, what the, the reviews? Yeah, no. no I no, think no, you no. could have Peter's top hat film choices, right. and then you just sit there with your top hat on. Obviously, yeah. do it just not you know, and uh, then you go. You've got one minute, and you're going to d- do a film in one minute and actually talk it and have your red hat and have a different well, hat on every next time. Next week, I am going to try doing my first vlog. Is it called mm. a vlog? Mm. Yeah, and so I'm going to sit in front of a, a video camera and have a crack at it. So. <laughs> So this time next week you'll be able to, you know, if what if it's not on, if yeah. it's not on the blog and not on Facebook this time next week, you'll know it's a failure. Well, I'm just going to keep going on it. You two put it on there. I want to see it. <laughs> uh, now, the Good Guys Guide to Getting the Girl. Yeah. What is the, um, what was your particular favourite part of the book? Because it must be a struggle. You've got the ideas, you're putting them down, yeah. and you must get parts and you're thinking, oh, because you've got to get pacing right It took me so. ten years to write that. Yeah. Absolutely, you know, and often when... Um, 
uh, often people's first novel <laughs> takes quite a while because basically you are learning as you go along. Yeah. So it's been written and rewritten so many times, but uh, I don't really have a favourite. There were quite a few scenes in there which I really, really love. There's, um, there's a really, there's a lovely, lovely romantic scene between um, between the hero Jason and mm. his old school crush Melanie, and uh, it's, it's sort of like um, the book goes back in time for for that chapter. It goes back to the 1980s when he and he's like when he's only like about 18, 19, mm. and he gets trapped in London one night because uh, British Rail wasn't really working very well, you know. And it's so, the good old days. Yeah, the good old days. Do you remember that? <laughs> you know, so Get the night bus home. So, yeah, so so he's sitting in Wimpy, and then you know, and then oh. and then in comes Melanie, Brown Derby, yeah, Melly, uh, Melly Jones, Brown Derby. Was Brown that Derby was a donut with the ice cream and the chocolate sauce and peanuts on top. Really? Yeah. I never knew that. There you go. I used to go to. You Wimpy thought it was Club. a hat, didn't you? I, I, did, I thought it was a. <laughs> I thought it was a horse or something. <laughs> and it's Brown Derby <laughs> at the finish line. <laughs> and, and, and there's this lovely romantic scene where the two of them, you know, they, they go to the pub and he grants her three wishes because, you know, because um, he's looking a bit down. And, you know, and it's, uh, I love that scene so much. It's really lovely. And then it all goes crashing down and you meet sort of all goes pear shaped. Who, if you, I was, I was saying to my author yesterday, who would play? I knew you were going to say you that. Knew I, I was came prepared. Say, oh, he's Look. got, oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got pictures. Who would play the main characters in your book? Uh, well, the main character is called Jason, yep. okay? And I have this... I'm a bit superstitious about this because when I read a book, okay, and um, I tend to cast it in my mind, so mm. I'm going to leave that down to the reader. But some of the other people, his best friend, Alex, could be played by Nick Frost. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah, I like yeah, him. yeah. Um, yeah he's good. His old school crush, Melanie, could be played by Jessica Alba. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and his ex-girlfriend, uh, Liz, could be played by Rachel Weisz. You wish! <laughs> she's lovely, isn't she? She is lovely, she, but she's, she's also got that kind of edginess. Yeah, she has. Yeah, she's very beautiful. Great. She's married to, uh, isn't she, to uh, James Bond. Is she? What, Craig, Daniel Craig? Daniel Craig, she's right, married to, okay. yeah. Very quiet Lucky man, head, Lucky yeah. man. Yeah. But she's a beautiful woman, though, and very good actress. I like her. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be a while for the film. It'll be, you know, but who knows? It might be around the corner. Mm. Keep your fingers crossed. What about? Um, uh, you've got no sort of like actors you've played in the lead role, you know? What you uh, men you're talking yeah. about? Uh, well, the, uh, Gary, who's his nemesis, could be played by this man, Jack Hudson. <laughs> He's nice. <laughs> It needs to be played by somebody like that. Yeah, you just got loads of pictures of women there. Hang on, well that's because there's quite a lot of females <laughs> in the world. Oh, there's a photographer, uh, a chap called Dave Fells, which would be brilliant if he's played by Bill Nye. Oh yes, he's a good I actor, isn't Bill he? Nye. Yes, he's now, in everything I know. If you want to good. find out more, uh, because we're coming up with the news, all the W is Peter Jones yeah. uh, and also the Good Guys Guide to Getting the Girl is out now. Eight percent funny. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it um, via your website and good yep. bookshops as well and Kindle. Yes, absolutely, all formats. Lovely. Yeah. So I'll see you again soon. Yeah, all right, see you soon. Would have been, see, you don't even sound genuine then. Yeah, yeah. see you soon. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> That's all that said. Here we go. Here's the news. <laughs> On the hour, across Brentwood.